<laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, hey guys, what's up? If you want to see the unboxing for this, I highly recommend you check this out. This thing is freaking awesome. It's showtime. What's up guys, Django Fred here, Honey Down Games, Comics, TV Shows, Movies, and more. And this is a review for Defenders, or The Defenders Season 1 on Netflix. This is the latest of the Netflix TV series, and the second of which to come out in 2017. The first was Iron Fist, and I think you guys know how I feel about that freaking show. And now Defenders, which is the whole team, you know, with Daredevil, Iron Fist... Luke Cage and Jessica Jones all teaming together to fight against the hand. So the first episode really is them, you know, it takes a while, probably like two episodes, three, two, three episodes for them to actually get together. But that first episode is really unique in my opinion because of the, each character has their, they're all separate, but they all have their own different styles and takes with them. Daredevil has a more edgy style, uh, you know, Jessica Jones has a more detective monotone with her show. Pretty much bringing her style of show uh, from Jessica Jones, the TV show, into the Defenders. And the same with Luke Cage with the music, um, you know, the yellow filter almost. And then we have Iron Fist, which is just, I don't know how best to describe it, it's just Fucking boring. The way this show started with Iron Fist, I was really scared about the show because I expected the show to follow that suit because it had like this close-up action scene that was so hard to follow just like it was in the Iron Fist TV show and just a bad start to the show as a whole. But after that, the show was completely different and much like, you know, Luke Cage and um, Daredevil, you know, it was pretty good action. So the show really takes its time before throwing this team up and setting them up together. And I like that, you know, you definitely want to see it set up first before throwing them in against the hand. And I like that, you know, they're all diverged, diverged, you know, divided and they don't know each other. And then soon they all get together and then form this so-called team. And it's them against the hand and the hand is led by Sigourney Weaver who is a, many people are saying she's a great villain, oh my god, she's dynamic, she's alright, you know, like for me, when I see a villain, yeah, they can talk the talk, but I want to see them prove it, I want to see them just be, you know, just become this evil incarnate, you know, just like the purple man, who is just an excellent example of how you do a villain. That is the best villain I have seen to date. I mean, not of all time, but still, like, that was a great fucking villain, man. And if they could match that David Tennant's prowess, that would be excellent. Sigourney Weaver, she talked the talk. And she was just, she was convincing. But she didn't, like, act the part. Like, she didn't really, like, do enough for me, you know? Later on, Elektra definitely captured the villain role. It was really predictable with her in the beginning because she didn't really have any recollection of what happened before. She was hiding herself and then I would think, you know, it was like predictable. Like, oh, she only heard through Matthew Murdoch's and, you know, and only she could talk to Matthew Murdoch and she, he was like the only one that could get to her head and she held back. And then later on, you know, she does something unpredictable, and I like that. But it was just like, it's kind of a predictable for the most of all, until that unpredictable moment happened later on in the season. And plus the cast really helps with that too. You know, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Charlie Cox. You know, those three guys really captured it for me. For some reason, Luke Cage was really subdued. I understood it in the beginning, but when he was facing the hand, it just felt like when he was fighting, it was just, it looked really subdued. This guy could go all out like the Hulk and just really do some serious, serious damage. But he just feels so subdued for the most part. That's how I feel throughout the show for me when it comes to uh, Luke Cage. 
And then Iron Fist. I mean, you guys know how I feel about Iron Fist. You know, I will say, he is better in this show than it was in his own show, in season one. And I hope it continues and he gets better and better. But, he's still not convincing for me. I, I don't know what it is with Finn Jones. It's the writing, and I think it's his acting at this point, too. It's just... It's not convincing for me. It's just the way he... I, I just don't I, don't... I don't see it with him as Iron Fist anymore. You could put anybody else as Iron Fist, and it really wouldn't matter. And it probably they'd probably do a better job. But he is better. I will give him that. He is better as Iron Fist in this show. Why I don't understand that he's a billionaire... Who I guess he doesn't care about his fucking image. Um, doesn't mask himself or have a costume at any point. And he's out fighting the hand, out in public. And he says he's the immortal Iron Fist. It doesn't, like, disguise himself or anything. Like, anybody can come, like, anybody. Not just the hand, but anybody just go, like, hey, that's the fucking Iron Fist. I'm gonna kill that guy and kill all of his family. Like, Hide your identity. Be like Daredevil, man. Like, come on. Like, Daredevil was the only one that, that had the costume, right? And then everybody else was like, didn't have any costume. So he was like, so out of place. So I expected, you know, Iron Fist to have a costume. Eventually. And, you know, take part with Daredevil and, you know, have the costume thing. But no, you don't see it. It's just... That is just so odd to me. Very, very odd to me. I think it's just... They didn't want to do it. I don't know. There is plenty of action, though I wish there was actually more of it, surprisingly. I wanted more, and... I got plenty of it, you know, but the, f the thing is, like, with some plot points with, like, the hand having this big menacing army, you know, you don't see it until the end, and you just feel like... Were they destroyed? And I know it was like in Daredevil season two, and you know Iron Fist or something like that. But like, you know, you don't see it in this one too much to an extent that you see like the hand by having this infinite number. I didn't see it. I know it has to be believable because it's like four against you know a hand and stuff. But it's just like I just didn't see the numbers the hand supposedly had. Now for me, still, those three characters were great. Iron Fist was still a negative for me. He could be better. Um, it's definitely the dialogue. It's just the way he is like, I am the immortal Iron Fist. And he got like angry so quickly and he acted like a fucking baby throughout the entire show. I was just like, not this shit again. I mean like, fuck off. Him and Colleen Wing were just so fucking annoying. And then we have... Uh, surprisingly Karen Page and uh, Foggy being super annoying as well and you know hampering Matthew Murdock as the daredevil like oh you're, you gotta hang it up you can't be the daredevil anymore man just not giving them the support and you're just like fuck off I don't want to see you sons of bitches anymore there was just a lot of subplots with minor characters like Matthew uh, not Matthew uh, with you know Foggy uh, Jessica Jones side characters, which I really didn't like that much. Um, just, like, little bits and pieces everywhere. And it's just like, it hampered the show at times. Like, I want to get back to the big four. I don't want to get back to this shit, man. I mean, come on. And like I mentioned before, with Sigourney Weaver as the villain, she was decent. I didn't think she was, like, as great as everyone was saying she was. You know... Actions speak louder than words, and I didn't see the action, but I did see the words. Wasn't good enough for me. And Electra spoke louder for me than Sigourney Weaver. And I felt like, like the final fight, not the final final fight, but like the fight before, like the last episode, it was kind of odd to me. It was just like the four fingers of the hand against, you know, uh, the defenders, and it was just like, it was such a weird fight, and it was just like, that fight in particular, as well as a couple of, I wouldn't say too many fights, but I guess there was like one or two fights. I wasn't really a big fan of, you know, the fight in the beginning, wasn't really a big fan of either. Just fighting in the dark, I'm not a big fan of, unless they illuminated properly and, you know, correctly. 
just some action scenes could have been better. And I just don't like the shaky cam bullshit that was in the, you know, the first episode. And the finale was just... Eh, it could be better, you know? It was just so abrupt, and it's just like... They didn't even do a good job of really... I mean, with Jessica Jones, I guess with Iron Fist, and I guess with Daredevil. But, you know, Luke Cage, they just left out. Usually, you would think they would have all their own endings, but Luke Cage surprisingly didn't. He just like, goodbye. Really? Like, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of that. I just didn't like the direction they were going at the end. They could have done a lot better with that, but, you know... What can you do? So I am giving Defenders Season 1, because I think there's going to be Season 2 and 3, A. This is definitely a step in the right direction compared to Luke Cage and fucking Iron Fist, which is the bottom of the barrel. But this is a step in the right direction compared to Iron Fist. And I like where they're going. And I cannot wait to see how they do with Punisher. I'm actually more excited for that. I think when it came to the beginning of the year, I said Iron Fist, Punisher, and Defenders. But Punisher, they got him right. I cannot wait to see John Barenthal tear ass and just go loose, you know? Just become the Punisher and just have at it. And with his own TV show, you know? That's fucking awesome. I don't know when it's coming out, but I'll be watching the shit out of that. But I am excited for Punisher. I am excited for Daredevil Season 3, Jessica Jones Season 2. Daredevil Season 3, they better have Bullseye. They have to have Bullseye. If you don't have Bullseye, the show is an automatic fail for me. Bullseye is Daredevil's arch enemy. He needs to be in there. But Punisher is the next show I will be watching whenever that comes out. And giving you guys a review so look out for that and don't forget to check out my unboxing for this sonic mania thing this is so fucking cool as well as star wars battlefront one and my other content on my channel so thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to please like and comment down below tell me what you think of defender season one don't forget to subscribe to the channel django fett and i'll see you my fellow mandoway mandalorian business next time oh yeah